All right, welcome back. So we've kind of got the math out of the way, uh, but no matter how much you get the math right, you still have to actually physically connect these things. You gotta plug them in and use them. Uh, so we're gonna talk about how to uh, plug them in. We're gonna talk about things you'll use in the lab and how you use the things in the lab, but also some other sensors that you won't use in lab, uh, but you might consider for your project. And just kind of give you an intro to some other light sensors you might wanna use. So the most basic light sensor that we're going to use is the brake beam circuit. Uh, so that's this guy here, right? So you've got your, your IR emitter, um, which R's we typically make clear. Um, and then you've also got your, you know, I guess I should call it an IR detector. Um, an IR emitter is going to have two legs on it. I mean, you can kind of see the two legs in this picture. Uh, they're going to be the anode uh, and the cathode. The important thing you have to know is just like any old LED, current flows alphabetically, right? So you've always got to put the anode uh, at the higher voltage potential than the cathode, um, and that will make current flow through this thing. The IR detector is really just a BJT, so it's going to have a base, which is actually just light, right? So you don't connect anything to the base, um, but then it's going to have two legs, and one of them is going to be called the emitter, the other is called the collector. Um, I know this sounds crazy, but emitters, you always ground. Um, if you really care, the reason it's called an emitter is because really electronic flow is about holes, not electrons, flowing through a, a pipe. So it's called the emitter because it's the, the creator of all the electrons. It emits electrons. Um, you didn't care. Um, you ground the emitter. So the way you actually figure up uh, what these things are, like which you do which with, is you look at their data sheet. Um, you'll look at the data sheets in the lab, but I'll just show kind of like an example of one here. Um, you'll get uh, a diagram for the emitter. Uh, typically it'll have a longer leg and a shorter leg. Um, in this particular one here, the longer leg is the A, which is the anode, uh, and the shorter leg is the cathode, right? There's also sometimes, not on all of them, a like flat. Um, if you like look down at the top, there's like one side that's got a, a flat ground. That flat ground should also be with the shorter leg, uh, which is the cathode. So the way that we typically wire these things is we put, um, you know, the A to the higher voltage, right? So it's going to go towards like a five volt unregulated, um, and then the uh, the lower side, the cathode side, will put on ground. And to be honest, you can put the resistor on either side you want, right? So you can put it, um, you know, between the high side, uh, which is where I usually put them, or you could have put it on the low side as well. To be honest, I usually put them like that, right? So in this in this case, the short leg gets grounded, right? So that's how you wire the thing. The IR detector is very different, right? So it also has a short leg. Sorry, it's, has, it's got a short leg and a long leg. It also usually has a flat uh, ground on one side. The flat typically just indicates which leg is shorter. In this particular one, uh, the longer leg is the emitter. Um, and as you know from emitter circuits, or from BJT circuits, the emitter just gets grounded. It always just gets grounded, right? It's connected straight to ground. Um, people find this confusing, by the way, because over here it's the short leg that gets grounded. And then over here, it's the long leg that you're grounded. And people are like, well, why couldn't they be the same, right? Why couldn't it be the same? It's like, they're totally different chips, right? It's like, it's not that they're not the same. It's just they're totally different chips. Um, and then the short leg over here is going to go to your resistor, uh, which will go to 5 volts. Oh, this is important, different. This, this one will be 5 volts regulated, right? Because we want a very exact 5 volts because uh, it's a signal line. Um, and then this signal is going to go to your pick, right? And then this voltage size, I mean, it's typically somewhere between 1 and 10K, but that's not even a guarantee. Uh, but that's kind of the typical range for that, which we talked about last time. So this is the circuit. If you don't wire it up right, it's definitely not going to work. Um, so, you know, you could change you could change resistor sizes to your blue in the face. If it's wired up wrong, it's not going to do anything. Um, also, these things are very killable, right? But that's just kind of part of the game. So this is the most basic emitter and detector. There are other packages uh, that we'll use um, in, in the lab, uh, but there are also some packages that you might use for your project. Let's do a project one first. 
One package that some people buy um, are typically called slot sensors. All a slot sensor is, is it's just an emitter and a detector um, that are just built in these nice little things and they just point straight at one another, right? So they're nice because the mechanical is already done for you. They point, they're directly aligned. These are really handy if you've got like, um, let's say you've got a turning table and you've got like a little tab on it and you want to see like when the turning tab is like right over the dispensing nozzle. Um, you can put a little slot sensor in um, and as soon as it breaks it, you're just going to know right away. Boom. Um, slot sensors, you could build yourself, uh, but it is kind of nice to buy things that work really well. You'll notice that in terms of range, these things are very close together, right? Like if you look at these numbers, I mean, this is like, you know, an eighth of an inch apart. And that's because these sensors really work best at like an eighth of an inch apart. Um, you can go farther, right? So you can go like, you know, three inches pretty easily. I've seen them function up to like, you know, six to eight inches, but that's about where they stop working, right? As soon as you try to go much farther than that, um, it's hard to distinguish between light and dark. So these sensors are really great for short range, right? So the thing we show you in class is great for short range. So just kind of remember that if your project you want to detect like, you know, 10 inches, probably not a great sensor for you. Um, another sensor that we'll use, uh, this one we'll use in lab some, is an IR reflective sensor. So a reflective sensor, um, instead of like, you know, having an emitter uh, and a detector that point at one another, right? Um, instead of setting it up like this, it just bounces off the ground uh, to come to the other side, right? So you've got an emitter right here. And so he's gonna be shining light. And then you've got a detector over here that's looking for that reflective light. So they come in a different package. They, they work using reflection, but they're the exact same concept. So if you look at the legs, there's an emitter, which they you know label as E. Um, the emitter has an anode and a cathode. Here they call the cathode K, just so that it would be a unique letter. And then on the other side, there's a detector. Um, they call their detector S for sensor, you know, whatever. Um, and um, it has a collector and emitter. This is just one package of a reflective sensor. The ones that we're actually using in labs these days um, physically look different. The ones that we're using in labs right now, and this will probably change, they look like this. Um, and they are, are nice and simple. They've got an IR um, LED on one side. So if you look at this picture, you can see this is the like narrow end. So it's the narrow nose. Um, and it's just got an anode and a cathode. And then on the detector side, which is over here, uh, note they're actually clear and black as well, which is kind of neat. Um, it's got an collector and emitter. So in the lab, you'll just have to figure out, all right, which of these legs is which? Um, and, you know, emitters, you're going to ground, um, as well as collectors, you're going to ground. Uh, anodes, you know, you'll do to an unreg uh, 5 volts. Uh, and then the collector, you're going to do to two places. Uh, one is the signal, and one is to the regulated 5 volts. So you have to figure this up in, in lab. Another thing that's different about this guy is he's got his own specs for how bright should you shine the LED. Um, so he's got his own things like, you know, what is the forward voltage drop? Um, so you can see his forward voltage drop is a little different. Uh, so it's 1.25 volts, um, you know, which is great. Um, it's continuous forward current is something different. It's not shown on this. You have to size that resistor there. In terms of its dark current, um, it says it promises like 200 nanoamps, which is nice and low, so that's kind of cool. Um, as far as its uh, collector current when it's on, it promises one milliamp. That's actually much less um, than what the other spec sheet was. So you do have to look at the, uh, the data sheet and actually try to figure out where you should start with your resistor and then try it to see if you're getting good readings. All right. Those we'll use in lab, not the slot sensor. Uh, you'll get to know those very well. Let's talk just briefly about things you might want for your project. Um, one thing that's becoming more popular in projects um, is what's called an IR module. I'm not sure where that name came from, it's just what they decided to call it. 
IR modules are what typically is used in like TV remotes. Um, these days they're trying to do more with RF, but for decades they've used IR remotes. And the way they use the way they use them is a little different. Um, they found that pulsing the LED is great, um, and so they use pulsing the LED because it can go a lot brighter, and it's actually easier to detect as well. So what they do is they they set up a carrier frequency. The carrier frequency is just how fast you pulse the uh, the LED. One standard is a 38 kilohertz flash. So you know you flash it like 38 thousand times in a second. So that's really 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 fast, right? Um, and so if you see that that flash um, on this IR module, it'll say, "Hey, I'm seeing that flash." And this is kind of weird, but they actually give you a digital output um, of either five volts. Uh, or zero. So these are very different than the other ones because they actually do some signal conditioning. There's some smarts in this box, right? They do some signal conditioning and they say, hey, I'm seeing the light. Here's a nice clean high. Or, hey, I see darkness. Here's, here's low. And they work a little bit better because they're actually looking for this frequency uh, that helps them filter out like the ambient light, right? And so that's how they work. So they're kind of nice. Um, they work at a little better range, um, not necessarily great, but they can work more at like, you know, a couple feet, right? I mean, it's what you use for a TV remote. So a couple feet, but not not huge, huge distances. Another thing which is kind of neat, just to kind of throw them out there, is this one is, um, a, it's a sharp sensor, it's pretty popular. Uh, but what it is, is it's also an emitter uh, and a detector. Um, and what it does, which is neat, is it's only got three pins so, you know, it's got power and ground, um, and then VO. VO, in this case, is analog. Um, but this one, actually, it takes care of the pulsing for you behind the scenes. It's actually so good that it's actually used to, like, find distances to things. So if, like, there's something close that reflects well, um, it'll give you a very high reading. Um, if there's something very far away or it reflects poorly, it'll give you a very low reading. We won't use these in lab. Um, but they're kind of nice for projects. Here's a link if you want to buy one. They're like 15 bucks though, so they're like a more higher end sensor. So there are a lot of light sensors. Um, these are the ones that use IR. What we're going to talk about next time is a CDS cell. Um, all right, so you should hopefully know a lot more about how to wire these IR sensors um, and some of the different ones you might want to consider for your project. All right, see you next time.